And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today's the Fair Isle Crochet Mittens. I'm wearing a portion of them because I am working with you here on camera. This is the Fair Isle Technique today and um, I would describe these as me mittens. These are for me. This yarn because it's Karen and Pantone together you know that that's a luxury yarn at a great price over at Michaels but the fact is is that because it has wool and it has all the ply definition these mittens feel amazing. This photo to me doesn't give you that impression of luxurious in the sense of the way that it feels. So if you're looking for something that is for you, yeah you, these mittens may be just the ticket. So without further ado let's dive a little bit into this pattern and then we're gonna do a full blown tutorial today on how to do these and get this done. So as we get started in today's tutorial there's a few things that you need to know right off the bat. You need two sizes of crochet hooks, a six millimeter size J and an eight millimeter size L and the cuff starts off with a smaller crochet hook and then we're gonna transition to a bigger um, um, hook of the eight millimeter to do this. Now this does look like knitting doesn't it? Nope it's absolutely crochet. This is called split single crochet. You need to be relaxed when it comes to this one here and uh, once you understand how, how this works and once you understand how to just to relax and calm down you can make these pretty uh, easily. So my goal today in the tutorial is to get you started get you started in this section. I'm going to teach you how to read the diagram for this. I'm gonna get you to finish off the tip and then we're gonna do the thumb together. Let me show you the diagram because this area here is pretty easy. There's actually, it's on both sides. Okay, so the diagram is showing twice on these mittens, so front and back. There's not a left and right version. They're both just one hand and it all depends on what hand that you throw it on. So on page number two it's showing you the 15 rounds here of this stitching pattern. So what you're just gonna do is just, it's parallel technique so you drop the yarn as you go. So if you wanna change it to white then you drop the, the other color, bring on white just for the one uh, stitch and then drop it again and bring on the other color and so on. So you go 15 rounds of this. So this here is actually showing twice. So you will do this, so you'll follow it across and then come back and do it one more time. So you're doing the front side and then as you turn the mitt you're gonna do it again. So this particular pattern appears on the front and the back side of the mitt. And how did you know that? Well I, I told you that there's no right or left uh, in this pattern. So this is basically the same thing. It's just turned. So what we have today is that we're going to get started with the cuff and then we're gonna get going and getting you started today. And just one more note before I let you go. So you're going to use two braids. So one braid is one mitten. I know it's hard to believe and then the other braid is the other mitten. You do use most of this yarn. So what I decided to do for mine is terrarium green. There's a color play tool on this pattern on Yarn Inspirations where you can just change the color and it shows you what it will look like in different. So I really like the terrarium here and uh, I thought it was pretty quite awesome. So you just have to unwrap your balls and uh, you can do them at the same time or just do one braid at a time uh, and then just be able to work on this together. So grab your six and a six millimeter size J crochet hook and let's begin. So I'm gonna get started and what I strongly recommend is you do the cuff both of them at the same time. So do one cuff, do the other. Make sure that they're the same width and I'll show you a photo right now. That's what I'm wanting you to do. So if you do that then you guarantee that they are the same size. I have a bad habit of doing one thing and then it ends up uh, one size is smaller than the other. Let's start off with the slip knot and you are going to chain a total of 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12 and 13. Once you have your 13 we're now going to go into row number one. Second chain from the hook so just count it back. So one and two turn it around and get the back hump of the chain only and I want you to single crochet across your chain in the back hump. So just keep progressing. Once you turn over the first one the chain stays turned over and the back humps are exposed. So just one single crochet in the back hump all the way across. So turning our work and going to row number two. So row number two is the same row all the way through. So you're just gonna chain up one. If you're new to crochet the stitch that you see the two strands equals a stitch. But if you go into the first strand that's closest to you that's the front loop. The uh, strand that's away from you the furthest one is the back loop. So you wanna go in the back loop of each one of these stitches. So just reaching over going to the back loop of the very first one that you're in and you want a single crochet and you're just gonna go in the back loops all the way across. So this is row number two. So I'm going to get you to 
the end of this row and then we're gonna turn it and then I'm gonna have you do your seven inches. And then I'm strongly recommending that you do both of the cuffs to the seven inches before progressing. Therefore you can measure out to make sure that they are both equally the same because there there would be a worse thing for you if you have a cuff that is one size is bigger than the other. Even by one row it can make a difference in the look and the way that it feels on your hand. So you're just going right to the outside or last stitch and then you're gonna turn your work and then chain up one and back loop it. So I want you to keep doing that and let me just back up the camera because I already have my cuff done ready for this one and so I've got my seven inches done and so I laid them together when I did the second one and I left on a loop because what we wanted to do is use the final one and come back across and put it together so that it's a cuff just like you see. So get your seven inches done now and then carry on in this tutorial when you're ready. So let's begin to do the final join. So I got my seven inches done. So I wanna turn the bottom edge and get it ready so that I can access it. So you're gonna be doing some slip stitching. So you're just going to not chain one at all and you were sim simply gonna go into the back loop of the first one here and then you're gonna go into the remaining loops of the first row that you did. Okay, so both of the loops and then you're just gonna pull through, through and through. So then you come to the back loop of the next one and again matching it to the next one. Pull through everything and carry on. When you do this make sure that slip stitching can be really tight. Just be relaxed about it. If the project is looking like it's starting to buckle in then you know you're too tight. So just continue to go and slip stitch yourself across. I'll see you back here at the end in just a moment. So once you come to the very last one just pull through and through and therefore it's done. So just pull just the remaining through. So you have to trim your yarn. I've already done it and just pull through and what you wanna do is that you're technically looking at the inside of the cuff right now. So take the remaining strand and then take a tapestry needle and I want you just to push us through and I'll see you here in just a moment. I'll show you how to do that. And now I'm just going to drag it through the stitch work. So this is considered the inside of the cuff. I've not turned it inside out yet. And just come through. Do not let that hit to the other side of the project. And when you pull, see how I just pulled that there? Just kind of make it relax a little bit and then go back in the other direction. Just don't go too deep. and then finally in the other direction again. Now you might as well take care of your starting strand that you had. And anytime you have strands here you're going to have to do this technique. So take the other strand that you had. This is the starting one and do the same thing of going in and out a total of three times. It's already officially a knot so you don't have to worry about too much about ever coming apart on you but you just gotta take care of your loose ends. And all you just wanna do is get those yarn strands because your hands are gonna be in and out of these cuffs. You want those to get taken care of. And now you're going to be ready to go and now we're gonna start doing the body of the mitts next. So let's turn this then inside out and this is the good side that you're looking at now and this is the cuff of your mitt. So let's begin to do the body of the mitt. The body of the mitt we're going to just go straight up and then we're gonna start expanding out on the one side and then just then changing over to this eventually. You're gonna need a, a, just a stitch marker to help you keep in count as you're going all the way around and what we're going to do is start on the cuff and our goal is is to get ourselves to equally spaced the same amount of stitches all the way around. So it's gonna be 24 single crochets. You're now going to switch to an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and I cannot emphasize enough you need to be relaxed when doing at least this first round and certainly relax then for the remaining as well. So let's uh, begin to try your skills. It's split single crochet but we're just gonna do a regular single crochet first. So keep your six millimeter 
with you. You may need it at some point. I found myself sometimes I need to do that and you'll see why in just a little bit. Create a slip knot to begin and I want you to join where this seam line was. You can feel it. You can kind of see it a little bit and you need to equally space 24 single crochets all the way around. This is going to pull things a little tighter. So I'm just going to move then progress. Remember it's equally spacing so just do another one. So I found with myself these ridges. So there's gonna be one kind of in between the, the, the two ridges and then there's gonna be one just on the ridge itself. I found that with myself. So I'm going to start counting uh, for myself and I totally have four now and I wanna get 24 equally. Do not join at the end. We're gonna go in a continuous revolution. That's why you need the stitch marker. So get your 24 stitches equally spaced around. So I've now just come all the way around. I want you to do something special for me. Take the other hook because it's easier and see how these are uh, open up like that. I want you to from the back side just come in between those and pull a stitch marker through that. That indicates the last stitch of your round. Now I'm having you pull it through the special area because we're doing split single crochet so that's right in between the split and we're not joining now. We're just going to continue to split single crochet in a continuous revolution for a, a certain amount of number of times. So let's begin round number two and remember that there's no joining at the end of each round. So let's begin round number two and we are going to go into these split single crochets. So we're gonna split them. So insert the hook. See how the legs of the stitch just go in between to the back and then pull through and then pull through two. You wanna be relaxed with this. I'm telling you, you'll, you'll hate yourself if you don't. <laughs> so okay, so here's the next one. Just go right in between. This creates the visual look of knitting. Okay. And because this is a nice tight stitch and naturally wants to be tight so you're thinking to yourself wow you're using an eight millimeter. The first time around like I'm doing is the most probably frustrating one of them all. Because you're officially going from where it's attaching where there's not a lot of space and then you're creating these split single crochets for the very first time. So I want you to go all the way around split single crochet and then meet me back here. If you are struggling because I was struggling the first time do not be afraid to go like this. Here's a tip. So take the other hook because it's thinner just going in and pull through but do not finish it. Switch back to the other hook. Put it on because that's the right gauge. Make sure and then finish it. So you may want to do that as well and it's again your call. So slip, uh, split single crochet all the way around for round number two. So I'm coming all the way around. Remember that I put this a stitch marker in there so that's the last one of the round. So just going in there and then just finish it. So that's end of round number two but before you move on I want you to move that stitch marker up to the next one that's in between. It's so important you do that because you don't want to lose count of where you are. As soon as, as when you get further away from the start it's harder to see where the ending is. So rounds number three, four, five, and six. The next four rounds is exactly what I just showed you. So let's you're just going to do a split single crochet. I'm gonna have you do all four rounds on your own. So just advance to the next one and start splitting single crochet all the way around for the next four rounds. So move your stitch markers up as you go and then you should be good to go and I will see you at the end of round number six. Okay so I have rounds number three, four, five, and 6 done over here and now what is missing? So now we have to start building out for making room for the thumb. So it actually adds more stitches right here. So we're going to be starting that the next eight rounds that we're going to expand. You should know that the first five rounds are the same color and then we're gonna switch off. I know it's hard to tell in this one but here there is a secondary color that's being used here. This particular brand. Uh, ball that I used. I just happen to keep the colors very close to each other there. So without further ado let's move on now to shaping the thumb and doing rounds one through eight for expansion. So let's begin. Now you're going to notice this particular shaping of the thumb. We're going to now in this round we're going to expand about halfway through. We're gonna count our stitches and put two split single crochets in two stitches on the other side here. So if you count it works out. 
Also then the round after that is just one into each and then the next round after that we expand again. So it's a very uh, simple way of doing it. So for the next, for round number one, we're going to put one split single crochet in the first 11. So you're gonna need to count these out. So I'm gonna shut up and just start counting. <laughs> I know you've been waiting for that all the tutorial. So let's uh, continue. So one and 11. So I put a split single crochet in the first 11. I just wanna verify. So the slip uh, st uh, stitch marker here, it doesn't count, it's the next one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Now the next two that you're going to run into, you're going to put two split single crochets into each one of those. So this will help it expand. So you're gonna do the first one, so one, and then do another one of those in the same one. And two, and now in the next one here, you're going to place in two. So one and two and then that's it. So you're just gonna continue then around to the back to the beginning of one split single crochet in each. Please do that for the remaining of round number one. Okay, let's move on to round number two, shaping the gusset and uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to go one split single crochet in, in each all the way around. So please do that, you already know what you're doing one single uh, split single crochet in each. Let's begin round number three. So we're going to then put split single crochets for the first 12 and then the next two after that is going to be two split single crochets into the same stitch. So just count those out uh, for the first 12 and then put in two into the next one. I'll see you there at number 13. So get the first 12 done. So one, so my first 12 are now in. The next two in a row are gonna be two split single crochets into each and then it's just one into the remaining. Please do this then around for number three. So I came up to the end of round number three. Round number four is just one split single crochet around in each one more time. So please do that again for round number four. So now at the end of round number four. Round number five is the last round for this particular color. You'll notice that the ball is getting smaller. So we're going to then, this one is split single crochet for the first 13 in a row and then the next two after that is going to be two split single crochets. So just count out in the 13 and then I will see you at the, on the 14th just to make sure that you are expanding. So please get your first 13 done. So my first 13 are done and now the next two in a row are each two split single crochets and then return back to just to one split single crochet for the remaining all the way around. So please do this. So two into the same one. So one and two and then the next one is two and then it's one into the remaining all the way around. This will be the end of this color at the end of this round number five. So I'm coming up to the end of round number five. I've gone into the last stitch. This is all that I have left but I do not wanna finish the last stitch with this color. I want to just fasten this off. So I wanna just cut and then what I want to do is I want to bring in my other color that is ready. It just happens to look very close. It's a little bit darker and all I'm just going to do is add this color in to the last stitch. To do that, I'm just going to create a slip knot and instead of using the, I'm sorry, I just pull the one through. Okay, that was the original. Now grab the new one. I know it looks very close. It's a little bit darker and just pull through and finish it with that. So now I'm ready to continue then into round number six. Round number six is just one split single crochet into each. I want you with the new yarn, just getting it ready and get the other two strands so that it's on top of the line. Now continuing up, oh before I continue, I want to make sure I move up that stitch marker. It's coming from the back this time. So I know where it is. And then we're gonna continue. Then one split single crochet in each using the new color. As you do that, you'll have to pull things nice and tight um, once you get things settled into your hands. And then just coming into the first one you're gonna do your split and leave the stragglers down on top of the line. So once you're in, just grabbing the yarn, pulling it through and let those just stay on the interior of that stitch work. Always getting started with new yarn is a little bit difficult. But once you get everything starting to 
looking good. Just pull things back into alignment and then just carry on. So one split single crochet in each and continue to bury these stragglers as you go and I'll see you at the end of round number six. So let's begin round number seven. You're going to need an extra stitch marker. Not sure why yet but I'll have to continue. If you look at the original I have a stitch marker here as well. So what we're doing is we're now going to create this thumb opening. So let's uh, begin to do that and for the first 11 stitches I want you to split single crochet. So count out the first 11 and then meet me back here in just a moment. So one and continue to 11. So my first 11 are now in. What I need to do now is that I need to chain two, one and two. The second chain I'm going to deal with in just a few moments. So I want to skip a total number of eight. So skip the next eight uh, stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and go to the ninth one and split single crochet. Now just to sp split single crochet the next couple in a row. It just gets a little bit easier if you do that. And you're going to split all the way back to the beginning anyway. So one into each. So what you've done is that you've created the hole for the thumb. Right there. So it says to put an a stitch marker in the second chain. So right there. I don't know why yet. Um, I haven't got that part in the other uh, sample that I'm doing but I'm gonna put it in anyway because it says to do it and that's what I'm gonna do. So are you gonna finish this round number seven? It's just one slip a uh, single a split single crochet into each to the uh, remaining the beginning again. Let's proceed into round number eight and then we're going to then get started with the fair isle, a fair isle concept after that. So what I want you to do is one split single crochet into each. Now those two chains that you did you're going to put one single crochet regular into each and then continue to split single crochet all the way around. I'm gonna have you do that. I don't need to show you how to do that. Just make sure that that's what you do and then we're gonna be finishing off this color and then getting ready for the fair isle technique then after that. So one split single crochet into each, uh, one single crochet into the two chains and etc. and come back all the way around and we're gonna get rid of this color together. So we're coming up to the very final one and um, that is going to be it for this particular color. So I'm just making sure I go into the last one and then we're going to begin doing the fair isle concept. Now the very last stitch that I'm about to do is that I need to get the first fair isle color ready and it will be um, the light color of the two. So I'm just going to grab my other crochet hook. Sometimes you gotta do that if, especially if you've gotten tight. I have no shame <laughs> in doing whatever works for me. So I'm going to let this color that we just did, I'm going to just back out the camera here a little bit and we're just going to trim this yarn. We're now going to get ready for the Feral Technique. Let me start explaining some stuff. I am not gonna take you through every of every round of the 15. I'm going to just show you how to change your yarns and get yourself started and then I'm gonna leave the 15 rounds for you because your goal is to make it look like this. So on page number two is the Fair Isle chart and basically it's showing you the two colors. It's easier just to follow this on camera. If I have to show you each one of these rounds you're gonna get so confused it's not even funny. So you're looking at the front side or the back side it doesn't matter but you're gonna have to do this twice. So you're just gonna follow it across and this is a 12 stitch repeat. Remember that how we started off with 24 rounds but when we got rid of the when we jumped over the thumb area here we got ourselves back to 24. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna do white and then a dark or light and then dark, light and dark and continue. Now when you get to a solid one like this which you'll see it here, you just don't get rid of the white or the light color. Just keep it um, there and then you're going to bring it up next time in the stitch. So you're gonna carry the yarns underneath the work. This is called tapestry and you're gonna carry it underneath. It is really slow going the very first time because you're like up, down, up, down, up, down as far as like the, the colors but once you get into the other stuff here it gets easier because you have to change the yarns less. The biggest tips I have for you, put one yarn ball in front of you. So just take the one and just go in the front and the other yarn ball almost behind you to the side so over there. 
when they come to your project they will not be in the coming from the same direction and therefore they're easier not to tangle them as well. So that's what I'd recommend. So let's begin our row number one of the 15. Let's show you how to um, change out your yarns and to make sure that everything is gonna go. I will give you a heads up right away. It's gonna be very slow going for me to get started um, as far as like getting set up but once you're set up you're good. So let's try and see what you can do. So when I last left you we were still in the last stitch. We didn't finish and we're going to bring in the light color. So let this just drop. I'm going to use a tapestry needle to sew that in on the underside. You're going to take the next color here and just leave a little bit of a longer tail so that you can use a uh, tapestry needle and I want you to use that and just go in. Do not use a slip um, stitch to start or slip knot because it's really uh, difficult to be able to do it. I did it on the original and I wish I hadn't. So you're going to just split single crochet the next one using the white. Now when you look at this loop, the loop is always the top of the next stitch. It's never the top of the stitch that you're in. So you have to consider how you're changing out your yarns. So you're gonna go split, put this uh, down on the top of it so it gets it stuck and you are just gonna pull through. But you cannot finish that stitch unless the color in front of it is going to be the same. So unless this, um, unless it was gonna be the same color, like a white again, then you'll continue and finish that. In this case we're not. You're gonna take the second color, again leave a long tail, no sl a slip knot and pull through. So now that's in. So you're just gonna take the stragglers, okay, only the ones that are coming from the yarn ball and you are gonna leave those underneath the stitch work. So just get yourself organized. I promised that I would be slow going. To get started it's always a little slow. I'm just putting the stragglers out of the way and what I'll, I will do is that I'll just, when I'm good and ready, I'll just tuck them on the inside of the mitten so it's kind of out of my face. I don't know how that's working for me at this moment though but there you go. Okay, I'm almost set. Just make sure you tug things back into position. Do not be too tight because you still have to go into those split single crochets. So we're gonna use green as your next color. So split it. And you wanna leave down the white from the yarn ball on top. And pull the green through. But because white is the next color, you have to let that drop. You have to grab up the white and finish it with white. And then put the green down on top. And then coming into the next one with white. Okay. Just kind of pull things back into alignment. You get used to this motion. and then pull through with green because green is the next color. Okay, and now white's the next color. So pull through. So what I want you to do is that I want you to complete round number one and just keep switching off like this to get what you see on camera. Please do round number one. Okay, the last stitch then going around will be green because you started off with the white one and that's because you're going every other one anyway. Now I know what you're thinking. Just finish it off with the, actually don't finish it off with the white. I want you to finish it off with the green. So finish it off. And what I want you to do is move up the stitch marker. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, that was a lot of work. It is. And you know what, this is the hardest round. You'll see this round one more time before the end of the project. So this is probably because you have to change every other one that it's really kind of slow going. It's not hard, it's just time. So what we have is that we're now going to move up to round number two. Round number two, it is strictly just this green. Now what I decided to do is not carry this uh, inside. So the next round up is just strictly green. So just with this white keep it on the inside. If you let it go at this point and not um, 
and just um, just carry it up and not actually go around. It changes the thickness of the stitches. So keeping that underneath, I want you to just use in green only with the white underneath and just split single crochet all the way around into every stitch. Hopefully you've understood that you know the positioning of your yarn balls that feed it. It's just easier if they're coming from a different location and therefore they're not tangling as well on you. So just for round number two, just go solid color. In my case it's green all the way around. Just bearing in the white as you go. So coming back around on number two, round two, right back to the stitch marker and I dragged my light color the whole thing all the way around. This would be how you would do, um, this is similar to way you crochet or um, doing mochila bags and stuff but it's slightly different. So I'm going to finish off with this green because I can see in the pattern that I am going to need it anyway in the next stitch. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna have you do, I'm gonna just get you started on this round and then I'm gonna leave the rest of the rounds for you and I'm just moving up my stitch marker to keep myself in line. And let's go back to the diagram and let's explain a few things and then you're going to be doing the rest of this fair all concept on your own. So as we make our way up, we've already done this one, round number one. So we did light, dark, light, dark. The next round we did was dark. So remember that this is a repeat, so you're gonna do it across and then you'll do it one more time in each round. So what's gonna happen in round number three, the first two are the dark and then there's gonna be one by itself and then there's five dark, one by itself. Here's the trick. When you count these ones at the end of this, because you have to repeat it one more time, there's one, two, three, four, five, and then it's white again. So then what you can just do if you're really thinking about this is that you just have to keep it in line with each other. So just think, so you got five after and then uh, light and then five and then light and then finishing it with three. So the only one you really gotta think about for getting started in a row is round number five and 11. The reason for it is that the white starts off immediately. Therefore, when you go to do your, um, your finishing off in round number four, the last um, pull through should be getting ready for white that you see and you'll do that in number 11. So I want you to count the number of boxes and make it work. As you are doing this, so there's five darks here so it gets really quite quick. The only time it will probably slow down a little bit for you is number five but keeping an eye on that and it'll work out uh, pretty amazing for you. So what I want you to do is I want you to continue with what you already know and get that uh, finished and I'm gonna meet you at the end of row number 15. So I want you to do that, that polka dot thing that you just did already and get that done and then we're gonna then head to the top of the, the area there and we're gonna kinda carry on from that point. So let me just get you started on number three and then I'm gonna leave the rest for you. So let's get started in number three. So the first two according to the boxes are green. So the first two leaving down the white. So we have one and two but the next box after the two is gonna be white. So we're gonna make sure that we switch that yarn over to white to finish. And then the, the next one is white. And then how many boxes was it of the darker color? If you recall. So because the next box is green, we have to uh, drop that and finish it with green. And so the next five in a row are each a darker color so it's the green. The split single crochet has its um, advantages. It looks like it's knitting but it can be if you're kind of like stressed out it can be your worst nightmare as well. I'm just keeping it real. So one and what I want you to do is do five I just wanna pull this closer to myself so I can see the stitches better and then you're gonna do your light and so on. So follow your chart now up to round number 15, get 15 done and then we'll see at the top of this round or at the top of number 16. So I'm now at the top and I'm on the end of round number 15. So now what I want to do is start shaping the top. So I'm gonna change out my color. So the very last stitch that we did, I, I need to finish it with the new color. So just leaving an extra long tail. It's the same color that I used right here. Okay, I know it's hard to see there that there's a color difference but there is. So we're going to use that and we're gonna pull through and we're gonna get that ready 
and the shaping of the top is actually only two rounds if you can believe it and what I want you to do is just cut the other two strands the white and the dark and we're gonna use a tapestry needle after I'll show you how to do that and we are going to cut those clear the project and now we're gonna start doing some reduction so let's be able to do that next. Okay so what I want to do is get started. I wanna take the stragglers that I have left they're not uh, secured in yet just tuck them inside the top of your your project so right in the hole itself and then when we flip this inside out then we'll be able to access those and secure those into position. So let's begin. We're now going to start shaping so it says one split single uh, crochet in each of the next two. So just coming into the next one what I'm, get, I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this yarn that I am working with just underneath a couple of those stitches first. So one and then the next one is two. So now what it says is that um, you're gonna do a split single crochet together then and then we're gonna repeat that six times. So the next two are together. So just going in, pull through, go into your next one, pull through, and then pull through all three. So we have to repeat that six times. So I'm just gonna let everything go in the inside of the top using Farrah. Farrah is wonderful but it can be um, it, um, just labor intensive and moving around strands. So we're just gonna move, uh, put two single crochets or split singles in a row. So we have one and two and then the next two we come together. So just going in, pull through the next one pull through and then pull through all three loops. Okay, I'll show you one more time. So the first next two are each by themselves. I finished this section last night around 11.30 in the night. I can tell by the end of it I was getting relaxed because the stitches are looser than what I've been working with today. And then the next two are each together. So please do that same thing going all the way for the remaining of this round and move up your stitch marker. You're almost done. So as you come back around the very final two are together and you know what that's just keeping in line with the, the stitch count so I'm not doing anything special to cause that to happen. So put those together and then move up your stitch marker one last time here and then we're going to do your final round. in this section of the mitten. Let's begin then round number two. So round number two the first two are together and then the one after that is going to be one split single crochet by itself. My angle that I'm crocheting at is not conducive to me for this particular stitch. I'm just gonna be very transparent with you. I'm making it harder than it looks because of the angle. It's for your convenience and not necessarily mine. So what we have is then the next one is gonna be one by itself. Okay so the repeat pattern going all the way around this then is going to be the next two are together and then the uh, one by itself. Please do that same pattern going all the way around. So now at the very end leave an extra long tail and you're gonna use that to be able to sew in the remaining of the top. So you're going to pull it through so that it pulls it nice and shut at the end. To do that just where the loop is just pull that remaining yarn strand through and that will lock that into position. You can now pull out your stitch marker that has been traveling up the side of this and this area. Do not pull out the stitch marker for the thumb yet. You're not done for that. Now feed the darning needle. Now feed the tapestry needle through and all you're just going to do is just start collecting your stitches and I always pull at the end and you can also just go straight across but I wanna pull them all and gather them and once you're all the way back around you can just safely just pull on it and it will close everything up at the top. This is really quite strong yarn. Okay so now what I want you to do is just go in and out at the top a few times. 
it's kind of going up over both sides of the seam. And then what I want you to do then is that I want you to go on the inside of the mitten. Okay, so just pull things together. So just going in and just watch yourself as you put your hand in. Go right to the tip and just drag that through. And then when we decide to um, flip this the other way, what's gonna happen is that you'll be able to see that and then be able to pull that through. Okay, so let's, uh, so it's already in there just sitting waiting for me and what I'm going to do then is that I'm going to turn this inside out and we're gonna start weaving in our tails. We might as well do that now. So you can see all of the tails that we've been playing with the entire time. Okay, and now to get rid of your tails, I'm only gonna show it one time. So just to put it onto a tapestry needle and do not go to the other side of the mitt. So just stay within the fibers on the back side here and just go once, twice, and three times. And I want you to do that with all of your yarn strands now. Get those all into position and then we're, we're gonna do then is then finish off with the thumb. So at this point I just got my thumb left. So you can see it looks great. I'm really quite happy with it. We still have our stitch marker there and uh, these are really a great perfect size. They're probably one of the best mitts I've ever knit uh, myself and you know I know it took time to do this but this is amazing. So let's begin to do our thumb. So what we need to do is bring back the color that we just used before we, remember we used a solid uh, one color here and then we switched off for a few rounds. We wanna use that same color to start our thumb. So let's uh, begin to do that and we're gonna go in a continuous spiral like we have been. So you'll need your another stitch marker then uh, and you probably can use the same one that is already in position. So let's begin the next round. So we're going to begin where the stitch marker is. That was the second chain if you remember and I want you to go into that stitch. Now I want you to just leave an extra long tail. You're going to use this tapestry needle to uh, tuck that in later and you're just gonna pull through. So as a slip stitch, just pull through. And then you're going to begin then your first round around. So we're going to then goes one single crochet in each. So let's just chain one you just slip stitched. You're gonna do one single crochet in that one. Just get rid of that stitch marker out of your way there for a second. Just pull it out of the way. Keep it in there just in case you need to and you just wanna single crochet as normal. So you're, you're going right on that chain work. Do the next chain single crochet and now you're going to split single crochet each of the next eight. Okay, so these are the ones that you skipped. Okay, so just immediately jump to the first one and just do one split single crochet in each one going around. So I'm just coming back around and I am just going into the first one that I started with with the split stitch and all I'm just going to do, actually I didn't get a split there. Just gonna, it's nice and tight there and you want a, a tight thumb anyway so I'm just using my smaller hook just to finalize that one off. I have these gloves that I got from the store and uh, they have holes right where the join is and it just drives me crazy. So I found just switching off the hooks once in a while helped me to get through. So now that I've gone all the way around I wanna do one more round of just one split single crochet into each and then we're going to change our color and then we are going to continue then with our thumb. So just do one split single crochet into each with the same color. So I'm back all the way around. I don't wanna finish the last stitch. What I want to do is that I wanna bring back the green. So it looks like that the green belongs to the top of the mitt if you looked at the pattern. So what we're gonna do is get rid of this uh, color that we have now and now we're gonna continuously revolute, uh, go around using the green so that it's about two inches 
tall from the from the stitch marker down here. This is when you can put your thumb inside or your, your hand inside and determine how long you want your thumb. Uh, again you can personalize it for you because you may have a different size thumb than other people uh, because we're all unique right. So I'm going to just cr uh, create an extra long tail. I'll take care of the ends later. And I'm gonna continuously uh, go around now so it's either two inches tall or I'm gonna put in my thumb or my hand and see how long I want my thumb to be. Um, I really dislike when the thumb is longer than my own. So I'm gonna customize it. So I'm gonna aim for the two, see how I feel and then go and make decisions from that point. So do one split single crochet around in continuous rounds until either two inches or when you get it customized for you. So let's finish off the thumb. I did try it on. So this is my last round. So I wanna just seal it so it's at the top of my thumb. So you notice that I did change my hook too. Um, I just find it's a little easier for these um, single crochet two together. So and it's the last round anyway. So it's not, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So I'm just gonna go in and start just putting uh, two together, single or uh, split stitch two together and just, just put the two and then keep on turning and keep repeating that all the way around. Then what I'm going to do is like we did at the top, leave an extra long strand and then we're gonna draw up all the remaining loops and then just tighten it off. Just tug on it, pull it together and I'll see you there in just a moment. So keep on doing that all the way around. Two together, split single crochet. Okay now that I'm all the way around, I just actually have a little bit left so I'm just gonna pull through. I almost ran out of yarn there. But that's perfect. The, the designers, what they did for this yarn is that they wanted to make sure that they met, they uh, made you use as much yarn as possible so that you didn't have any to waste. People don't like wasted yarn. So they were very conscious and that was part of their plan. So now we're just gonna take a tapestry needle and collect the remaining of the loops at the top of the thumb. And then you're gonna pull on it like you did at the very top and then just weave in your your ends. Oh, I almost stabbed myself there. Just pulling on it a little bit just to see where I am. Once I'm satisfied, you can just strengthen it up just by going a few times across the top or the tip. And then what I would do, like I did before, is that I wanna stick it down through the center of the thumb and very carefully with the other hand just kind of lead it into your other hand on the other side. Don't catch any of the fibers along the way. I definitely can feel it and I'm gonna bring that down through. And then I'm just gonna turn this inside out, weave in my ends and then my mitten is good to go and it's been customized for me by the thumb. Now if you have any gapping spaces like this is not actually once you wear it it's not bad. If you have any of that um, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that now and just to make sure that you understand that. If you have any extra spacing in the thumbs just like here, there's an easy way of getting rid of it. Flip this inside out and meet me back here in just a moment. So I now flipped it inside out and I can see the hole even on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, cut the same color yarn that you have. You will have extra left over this particular color which is awesome. Great planning designers. I'm not sure that was intentional but that's awesome anyway. I'm not gonna complain. So just create a slip knot on the one side and put your tapestry needle on the other. All we're just going to do is that we're just going to seal that closed. Okay, so just coming on the one side. Stick to the fibers on this side. Do not go through because I don't want to direct the look and go through and that slip knot that you created, I want you to feed that through. Now just looking at the hole, you only gotta go probably twice. So just going across. See now it's filled in. Now to get rid of your ends, again just stick into this side of the work. Don't, don't mess with the other side with both of the strands. So you'll do the starting strand in just a moment and you will just put those in like so.
when I do uh, socks I always end up with that space in the gusset area. It kind of drives me crazy but it's a great way to be able to hide in that spacing. You know stitches sometimes open up especially in critical areas where you will be moving your thumb and again just three times back and forth and then trim. And then what you can just do is turn it over and you can get the back side of the thumb right here and you can seal that in too. So that's how you would get rid of it. Uh, stay tuned just for a second and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So here is your new Fair Isle mitt. Now the pattern shows that in the model that they rolled up the sleeve just like you see. So you can do that if you wish. Um, for myself I like this, uh, the cuffs to be actually inside my coat so that I'm not ever cold and you can see that it looks amazing on both sides and I can even try it on. The thumb has been customized for my height or of my thumb which I think is very close to the two inches anyway and therefore I have a great pair of mitts with merino wool and it is really wonderful and I'm so excited about it but again I would probably leave it down like that so that I don't get any chill up my coat. So until next time have a great one and it's Mike on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at YarnSpirations.com. Bye bye now.